Hi everybody, hey, it's Lisa here from Lisa Press Creations. Um, as you can see, I have finished my reading journal um, that I've been working on for a little while here. And um, I want to just do a flip through and show you what I came up with. I know a lot of people have already seen this, have seen me creating this journal, and some, some people haven't. So I just wanted to just um, show it to you real quick. So what I did was I um, took this old picture here that I put on here, it looks like my daughter. I put it on here because that looked nice. And I add a little dangle here with a bold pen. No, that's a button and some some lacy stuff and a, uh, um, a charm with some hearts in it. If you can see it. And, uh, and then I put some buttons here. And this is part of a curtain that I put this beautiful um, lace on there. Oh, that looked really pretty. And then... Um, then I just tied a closure on the side, um, like this. This book uh, measures um, five and a fourth, five and a fourth by eight and a half. It has seventy six pages, and it has uh, two signatures. So, but anyway, I this is how I did the closure with some ribbon here. I'm just gonna undo it. I'll show you how I did this. I did this is so do it this and then as you can see I left a little tail here with the with the closure with the ribbon and then here's the back and I left this on the back too as well so and then these just both tie together here and then let's just jump in here um, I have some beautiful end papers here that I took from an old book that I just really thought were so pretty it was kind of the inspiration of the book and I put it on the front and the back, and um, and I used some of the pages in here. I used from a kit called um, the Journal Boat, and and I made uh, some things from her kit. And this is one of the things: is this bookmark. And I took an old book page, put my circle punch and punched a circle out, added a hole reinforcer on here, and then I put the ribbon on there, the lace. And it fits in this little pocket. And then this is from Mrs. Coggs. I got these images from Mrs. Coggs Crafts. And um, this is of a girl reading. And I backed it with some tea dyed paper. Uh, I got it from her um, her kit called Oh um, it's, it's Oh, the Good Book. The Good Book. It was series number two for her, for her images, and I got that. And this is another page, and this is from the kit. Of course, these these cards are from the kit. This is Mrs. Cog's image. I backed it with some cardstock from my own stash. Made the book page. Made these pockets out of some old book pages. Here is an envelope that's part and a card that's part of the kit. Get it in right. Okay, that fits in there like that. Some tea dye paper. Here's another image from the kit. I added a little tag on top. Some old sayings. That was cool. There's some book pages. Some old advertisements that I put on some rice paper. Here's some onion skin paper I got from a friend. Here is some other pages I got. And here's a beautiful image of a lady and her husband or somebody. And here's a, um, a postcard from 1909 that you can journal in the back of. Put some paper lace on the top of here. Some more journaling pages. I left these, these blanks so you can have some places to do some journaling. And here is onion skin paper and some more that advertisement. There's some more just um, copy dye paper. Here is a pocket here of one of the images and I and I put it glued it on this postcard. 
And then I added a postcard behind it. And then this is a little booklet that I made. Got some paper in it to it. Just stapled some paper in here. And just tuck that right in here. Okay. I can squeeze it in. Okay. Bring it up a little bit. Okay. Let me move this just a smidge. There we go. Here is another um, tag here. If it's in there, here's postcard. And I have a pocket here, here, and then this right back here is a big old pocket you can put things into as well. So and then I put this in this little pocket here. Here is, I wanted to do some more stuff around here, but I thought, you know, it's, I think it's fine. And so here is a little tag. That fits into this postcard. And then this opens up. And it's a little place for journaling. It's another um, little pocket here with a lady on it. And here's a little tag. With one of those that moves around with put a brad on it. Here is a um, collage page that I did a while back and I decided, decided to add it to this book because I thought it looked kind of appropriate. Here is a um, front of a book page, Shakespeare. There's another page with a beautiful butterfly and journal, like a ledger on the back of the yeah, ledger paper, I guess, so I see what that was. Here's some more sayings. This saying says, April showers do bring me flowers. Some more of those. Here is a lady in a pocket. Get into a pocket and here's a beautiful tag. Get from that. Let's figure out this, making sure this is centered, okay. And then I got two flip outs here. Here's the first flip out. And it has a girl reading and a journaling card here. Comes out. And that's all from the, the kit, the journal boat. This is a Mrs. Cog's journal card from one of her images. Mrs. Cog's crafts. Okay, this flips open. And this has a corner pocket with two tags that are also backed with coffee dyed paper. Here is a, a lady reading with her dog. So cute. Here is another tag that I'm going to probably add a, put a hole in the top and put some string through it. Some ribbon or something. Do that. That's that flip. And then this is the other flip. This is also from the kit. There's some journal cards and some paper here that I tapered with paper I put here. And then, and then this is um, a picture of a girl reading. Oh, and I made this, these, um, pockets here. That lady reading, I put that there. Here's that picture that looks like my daughter. And I added another picture of that. I need to actually ink the edges, so I haven't done it yet. That's the kit. And then that flips in. And then there's another page here with another lady reading. Here's the tag. some more things. There's a little child reading with a little tag and I put the little child pocket on here because I thought of it about I thought about it as being bedtime and this is the clock here. It's kind of like that's one of the first pages I did in the book so get this some more of that rice paper. Some of that advertisement. Here is a pocket that was some lace on the top of it that I made, and then here's another pocket that I put on the top of here from the kit, and here's a lovely lady reading. And I ended up leaving the envelope empty because I could not think of things to put into it, so I just left it let you guys do that. Here's a couple of postcards, 1918. Uh, you can write on the back of these, of course. 
And then here's the last page. Here is a doily that was taken off of that, um, that curtain that I used on the front of the book. And this was another piece of that. And I just put it on top of there. And, and this is a pocket here. And this is another pocket. Here's a tag. Here's a card. I decided to just put it in the pocket with the tag because I was having an issue with where to put that and I didn't really know where to put it, so I did that. So, and as you can see, I have some metal corners on the front and the back. And that is the last page. And there's the back. Here's the back. Make sure you see that. Okay. And then... So that, anyway, that is it. That is the flip through. Hope you guys like it. Um, it's already been put in my Etsy shop if you, anybody's interested. Um, that will be available for you if you would like to order or you know somebody that would like to order it. So, but anyway, earlier today I was up to making some coffee dyed paper. So I wanted to show you some, some of that coffee dyed paper that I did earlier today. It took up a lot of my morning, but I'll put that over there for now and I will show you this. So I took some envelopes that were out of an old um, stationery set and I just tea dyed them. I thought that looks so pretty. It came out so nice. So I did those. That one. I did this one. I did like four of these. Four of these envelopes. I did. And here's some of the paper that I did. And what I did to make to get the look that I wanted on this paper, I did what they call them a double tea dye. So I went ahead and I just regularly tea dyed my paper. And after all of my papers were done, I set them all out and I dropped coffee drops on here. Just kind of smeared them on, just kind of dropped it on, whatever. And it, it gives it this really neat look. And so that's how that happened. And then, this is interesting. I did a bunch of these too. These are those doilies. So what I did is I took a doily and I put it, I put, as this table was wet and this was wet, I put it on there and they're both wet in the in the uh, coffee dye and then I just kind of drained it off and then I put it on my cookie sheet put it in the oven and then when I was done this is what it did left an imprint I love that it came out so nice so that's what I did with some of my papers on here too I, did, I used and I dyed a bunch of these a bunch of these stories put it over there and here's some of the paper that I did just wanted to show you some some samples of some paper and then I did something I'd never done before and I I actually did some paper that I tore the edges on and then I, I dyed it the same way and it came out really nice. I really like how that looks. It's going to look really neat in a book. There's some more. Coffee dyed. And just some more. Some more and some more. Different types of paper. I just love that. And the fill of this is very smooth and I like that. That's pretty. So that's what that looks like. So, that some more interesting paper. Just came out really nice. I thought that it came out nice. It's a really long process because I have to dye it twice. You know, after I put the drops of the coffee on the top of it, let it dry for a little bit. It was taking kind of a while, so I decided to put, put that in the oven and to dry it a little bit more quicker in the oven, and that's how I did that. And then this is what I wanted to show you was this is the rice paper. I love it how the it came out so nice in the rice paper. These lines, incidentally, are um, on my cookie sheet. They're like bumpy. It's like I, one of the sheets I got at Dollar Tree. And it makes the paper look like there's like lines on it or something. It makes it bumpy, which I really like. And I love this. I love this page right here. This is just gorgeous. just love it. And anyway, just go on and on and on. And this is just half of it. I mean, I just, I did like probably 50 sheets today just to get a bunch of it done and get it going there. And so... Anyway, that's what that's what I did today, partly part of the day. And then I wanted to show you real quick if time permits. Let's see what time is it. Okay, yeah. I wanted to show you my next project of what I'm gonna be doing. And here is what I want to show you. Put this back in here. This is the book that I'm gonna be gutting out that I already have actually gutted out already. And and I'm gonna make this into my, my next project, my lavender. I'm gonna do a lavender journal. So what I thought was so interesting is that I was getting ready to get this book out and I'm just kind of thumbing through it, you know, and I come, I'm just kind of thumbing through it and I come to a, a story that says, um, it says, the story of my life, Helen Keller. 
And there's a picture of Helen Keller. And for some of you that don't know, I know you guys probably know all this, but she was blind and deaf. And I always thought that she was like born blind and deaf, but she actually went blind, blind and deaf at the age of 19 months old. And it, they don't really know, all they say it's an illness and they don't really know what illness it, that it was. They don't know what, maybe it was either scarlet fever or uh, meningitis, they thought is what caused her to be the way she was. But this is an incredible story. So I'm reading this, <laughs> even though I got a bit. And it's just an incredible story about her life and how she learned to talk and everything and how Anne Sullivan came and taught her how to how to do sign language, how to understand sign language. It's just amazing. This is a miracle person here. Here she is at, oh, I think, eight, oh, seven years old. But she's a really pretty girl. I mean, you know, you look at her and you never would know that she was actually deaf and blind. Here she is when she graduated college, Radcliffe College in 1904. I'm just kind of skipping around. Here's she actually met Alexander Graham Bell, and her dad knew Alexander Graham Bell, and he they tried to come up with ways of how they could teach her how to, how to speak and understand, and so he kind of like helped her. He was a friend of hers. I thought it was really neat. Um, here she is at twelve. She's reading Braille, here, but and you know, and she is from a wealthier home, you know, and that's what I, I get from this is that they. They were wealthy enough that they could pay for someone to help her understand, and that's what that's what Ann Sullivan did for the next fifty years. She she took her places. They went on vacations together. She actually taught her, and it was her life's her life's mission was to to provide this for her. I thought that was just amazing that somebody would have that much um, desire to help, want to help somebody so much. So here she is, and she's teaching her how she's. Uh, she actually would hold her hand, and she would do her sign language work in her hand, in Anne's hand, I mean, in um, Helen's hand. And, and she just just knew what she was saying just by her doing that. I was like, that is so cool. Anyway, it's amazing. It's an amazing story. If you guys get a chance to ever read it, it's just so good. Or if you watch a video, the, the, um, the video about it or whatever, it's just so, so great. And I was just so really blessed by it. It was just so encouraging. So anyway, this is the book. And what I wanted to show you real quick before I get on with this is that I wanted to show you that one of the papers that came in the book, this is one of the end papers. Let me see, I already tore it off. See, this is the third time I've done this video because I, I uh, think this wasn't working earlier. So what I wanted to show you guys is that you can take some of this, take a, take this off, right? We already know I'm doing a lender, lender book. So what I'm gonna do is just use these end papers that are already colored that I want. These are already colors that I want to use for it anyway. I don't have to put any papers in. And then I took tore this page off the back page and I'm gonna just go ahead and put this down. I've done this before. before and before I do that, I'm going to add some of this, this really heavy board. And you know what? I it's got cardboard. And I'm gonna measure it and put that in there. And and then go ahead and cover this. And I'm going to show you on the next video how I'm going to do this. But anyway, I thought this is going to work out really good. So, what I wanted to do, if time permits, let me see what time it is. Oh, yeah, I got time. So, what I wanted to do real quick was I wanted to just show you uh, what papers I'm going to be using for this journal, what kits I'm going to be using, and all that junk. All that cool stuff, I should say. First, I'm going to be using, of course, the kit that I got from the Journal Boat. It is called Purple Botanical, and it's a beautiful, beautiful kit that you guys should try and get. It's very pretty. So I'm going to show you all the papers for it, uh, what I'm going to be doing, using. The kit. These are some of the papers, some of the ephemera. Here's some pockets and a really beautiful postcard. And she always has these certain things in her in her kits. Here's another beautiful one. This is one I would use as a writing page. It'd be perfect. And maybe this one as a writing page. Here is a collage. Here is another collage. Here's a flowered, beautiful flowered page. Here's a beautiful purple background. She always puts tags 
um, stamps and butterflies in her kit. Most of her kits. This is more ephemera. She also adds the small tags and a envelope with a card that goes in it. And that's usually what she puts in her kits. And so that is really nice. So that's what we're going to use that for this journal coming up. And then I'm also going to use Mrs. Cog's kit. And this one, her kit here is called Lavender in the Garden. And these are the images that I'm going to put in here. Uh, I'm going to list both of these items in my description box below so you can read them and see what kits these are. Maybe you want to purchase these. I don't know. They're they're really fun, you know. This is Cause Crafts. It's just great, great images. They're all deal with ladies with lavender and children and all that with lavender. And that's the last page. So, okay. There's four pages to this kit. So anyway, I'm going to be using both of those in my upcoming book. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching my flip through. If you guys know anybody or who would like to purchase my journal, check out my Etsy shop that will be listed in the description box below. And um, so anyway, can't wait to get started on my new, new project. Next time you see me, I'll be working on that new project and uh, doing something with it. Putting Probably just putting the getting it prepped or something for the, the signatures or whatever. So. Okay, guys, well, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate everything that you guys, all the comments, all the thumbs ups, and, um, you know, and just that you guys have also, uh, and I just want to thank my subscribers for subscribing, because it's great. And um, anyway, you guys, um, I just, I just want to say thank you guys for everything, and I will see you guys in the next video. And for now, um, you, you have to go out and have a blessed day now, okay? All right, take care. All right, bye.